U.S. drone company Skydio faces a setback as China imposes sanctions cutting off access to essential batteries. The reason? Skydio's recent sales to the Taiwan National Fire Agency led to the restrictions impacting their battery supply chain. Skydio CDO Adam Bree explains that while their frames and most components are U.S. made, batteries are still sourced from China. Although they have a current stock, delays are expected, with new suppliers planned to be sorted out by spring 2025. In the meantime, Skydio plans to limit customers to one battery per X10 drone and extend more warranties and software licenses for orders with those missing batteries. This isn't ideal, but it is a temporary solution. The FBV community is buzzing with new leaks. Prominent leaker Jasper Ellens is back sharing teasers about DJI's upcoming FPV goggles, the N3. These new goggles apparently will address past complaints with an updated design, swapping old lenses for a snugger fit with foam seals and they're ditching the uncomfortable rubber. For FPV pilots flying at high speeds, a well-suited headset is crucial, so there's no slipping, no nose pinching, and definitely no distractions or light leaks. In terms of specs, you're probably gonna expect a 1080p screen, 60 frames a second real-time feed, and a 54 degree field of view per lens, and about a 2.7 hour battery life. Leaked images also suggest that the combo with the new DJI Neo, making an ideal starter setup and probably a more affordable price point. It seems all but confirmed as usual, but as photos of these alleged units start circulating around, we know that something's probably coming pretty quickly here. In a bit of a frustrating turn of events, a drone crashed at a Boston Celtics watch party, injuring fans who had gathered to enjoy the game. The incident took place around 8 p.m. on October 22nd at City Hall Plaza in Boston. As spectators cheered, a drone fell from the sky, injuring two people. Thankfully, their injuries were non-life-threatening, with only one person sustaining a hand injury and another experiencing a pain in their head and torso. Police later identified the operator as a CNN contractor. The drone was filming the event when it collided with a light post, which caused it to fall down to the ground. So as a reminder for Canadian pilots, if you want to do something like this, an SFOC is required for drones that weigh 250 grams or more to advertise events. We do have a full video explaining this process. Go check it out. Regardless of the size though, caution is key. Using a visual observer and proper safety protocols is critical when flying near large groups or obstacles. It's unknown if a visual observer was used in this case, but an extra set of eyes also greatly improves your situational awareness. In America, pilots flying drones for commercial use must have a Part 107 drone pilot certificate. We've also created a course on this, so go check it out if you're interested in the links below. Leaks are surfacing of an entirely new action camera coming from DJI. A recent FCC filing hints at a new DJI Osmo 360, probably their first, well, this will be their first 360 entry into the action camera market. 360 degree cameras capture everything around you, so there's no need to worry about missing that shot. They even create some stunning footage when you mount them on top of FPV drones, but proceed with caution and think about how you're modifying a drone in that sense. With Insta360 largely been unchallenged since GoPro hasn't updated the Hero Max in a very long time, it's prime time for DJI to shake things up and offer something new. Mockups from user Hakasushi on X show a flat design similar to the GoPro Hero's Max 360 Details are pretty sparse for now, but DJI entering the 360 degree market is exciting news and we're going to keep at least one omnidirectional eye pointed at this for you. While most 20 year olds are busy scrolling their feed and or commenting on videos like this or learning new words that I just can't understand like fleek, Isaac Strubbs of Cass County, Illinois is transforming agriculture with his innovative company, Strub Drone Spraying. Isaac grew up on a farm, sparking his passion for innovation early on. After earning an associate degree in precision agriculture technology, he looked for ways to boost his family's farm through new technology. To operate his drones, Isaac holds a Part 107 drone pilot certificate, plus a Part 137 certification for pesticide spraying, assuring he meets all regulations while using this advanced equipment. He operates a DJI Agris drone with a 10.5 gallon tank, supported by a custom trailer that serves as his command center and also his charging station. When flying solo, he can cover up to 80 acres an hour using this drone. With his assistant, Connor, they're able to double their efficiency by operating two drones at once. It looks like Isaac isn't just keeping up with ag tech, he's leading the way, making once monotonous tasks quicker and easier to do from the air. Drones are rapidly becoming the standard for spray operations, replacing expensive helicopters and airplanes, saving time, effort, and the human risk of flying low level over farms. For more information on the world of spray and other agriculture drones, check out our in-depth interview where Finn interviews Maya from TurnTech Solutions on a podcast episode from earlier this year. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay tuned to this week's podcast where we're gonna go deep 
deep into the world of drones on construction sites. It's going to air this Sunday at 10 o'clock Pacific. So hit that notification bell, of course, and make sure that you don't miss it. In the meantime, though, check out last week's episode on autonomous drones and what it means to fly a drone that you technically cannot control. We'll see ya.